Hello everyone, it's John Martinez. I'm back with another Blender tutorial. I know it's been a while since the last one, but that's because I've been working on this really big and complicated one for you all that I will be starting for you today. It's going to be a multi-part series because it's very involved, but this procedural building that I have here uh, allows you to actually pretty much adjust anything you want to on it completely inside geometry nodes. You can adjust the windows, you know, the height of them, the shape of them, sort of, the door position, the building itself. Uh, everything about this is completely procedural. Nothing in it was modeled by hand. And so hopefully you can use this to build your own cities or whatever, kind of like I've done here. I'm just gonna be doing the, the building itself, not the whole world building that I've gotten going on here. Anyways, end of the tutorial. Hey, real quick before I get started, I've made a Patreon. So stick around at the end of the video and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Let's go over to geometry nodes, add a new geometry node setup, and get rid of that connection right there and just create our own cube that we will connect right there. The reason we're doing this is because we're actually going to be instancing uh, some little modules, what I call them, on top of each of the vertices of this base mesh. And we're going to be able to control the size of it over here in the side panel there and make everything about this completely procedural and controllable from the outside. You can change the size of it, the shape of it, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and hit in to bring up this little side menu right here and go on over to the group right, group tab, delete the geometry input, and then we're going to go ahead and add in some controls right here to our vertices like that X, Y, and Z so that now we can control the size of it like, like that. But as we do that, of course, it's just increasing the density of points, but not increasing the size, which will make it a little bit difficult if we want to add in uh, modules on top of here and not have to make the modules themselves get uh, dynamically resized as well. What we want is for each of these points to be one meter away from each other. So one meter there, and then if we want to add another point, extend it out a meter that way, and another, and another, and so on and so forth. So the way we're going to do that is by also dynamically changing the size in relation to the number of vertices we have as well. So we can go ahead and take a combine X, Y, Z and connect all of these right here. Then take a vector math and connect this vector here and then subtract one from all three of those and plug it into our cube size. And as you can see, nothing changes because right now our vertices are set to two on each of those. And then we're taking all two of those. So our vector is basically gonna be two, two, two for what's coming out of this right here. And then we're taking it into the subtract. And if we actually were to plug it directly into size, it would increase the size of it because it's saying it wants the uh, X direction to be two meters across from here to here, two from there, and two from there. So that's why we're subtracting one from there, just to bring it back down. So that way when we have two vertices, that is one on each end, it's only gonna be one meter there instead of the two. All right, so now we have our cube set up so that we can increase the size of it. And each time we increase the size, the distance between any two points is always going to be one meter, which makes our job a lot easier for what we're gonna be doing later in a bit. And we also wanna make it so that the bottom of the modules that we're gonna be creating, again, on the points, and each of the modules themselves are going to be one meter boxes centered around each point. And so what we want is for the, the bottom of the bottom floor, really, to be uh, level on the ground here. So that way, as we increase the Z size, you can see instead of you know, moving down and shifting all that. We don't want to do that. We want it to actually just uh, increase in the vertical direction like that. So let's add a little bit of a modifier in here to make that happen as well. Add in a math node uh, and then a transform. Plug that in there. And then we'll change the math node to a divide. Take our Z vertices divide it by two and go ahead and combine that. Not what I want. Co 
combine x, y, z and plug this into the z uh, input right there, then connect that to our transform. Now what that does is it takes our bottom vertice right there and moves it up to 0 0.5, which is what we want, again, because the boxes that we're gonna be making are going to be centered on this 0.5 right here. So this way, no matter what we do, the Z is always going to increase up and our boxes will be staying down here like that. So now that we have all of that and we are kind of have our base mesh right here that we can uh, instance all of our points on, let's go ahead and actually instance some points so that we can see what in the world it is we're actually going to be doing. So let's add in an instance on points. Look that up there and everything disappears because we are instancing nothing right now. So we'll add in another cube and connect this right there. And as you can see, we're left with a much bigger cube than we were before. It, it looks really similar. And in fact, if we pop out of there, click off, it just looks like one big cube. It doesn't really seem to change a whole lot, but what it actually is, it's creating a bunch of cubes on each point of our original base mesh, mesh. And of course we can procedurally change that. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave this at 0.73 right now just so that we can kind of actually see what we're working with. But right now everything is just the same. There's nothing actually going on. Of course, we'll be creating the windows and all that jazz uh, in later parts of this tutorial series. But for now, uh, in this part, we're just going to select all of the faces and make sure that we know which parts are actually doing what we want them to do. You know, we want to create a uh, ground floor right here and create a selection for the roof edge right here because we're going to create a little uh, thing, a little overhang on top of it that we're going to put on there. And then we also, of course, want to select all of the wall pieces here and even selecting our corner pieces because, of course, you know, we draw a window on these middle pieces here and we will want a window on both sides of our corners as well. And you, know, you could get around this by just having a window on literally every side, but that introduces unwanted geometry. So we're going to go to a lot of trouble to make sure that we have our faces, our windows only on the faces that will actually be facing out where we can see them. So how do we select which faces are going to be our walls, floors, ceiling, roof, all that, all that jazz. The way we do that is with Booleans. So let's go ahead and add in a compare node and figure out how we're actually going to do that. So in order to figure out which parts go into which, you know, groups, let's call them groups here, um, even though they're not actual groups, in order to figure out which parts go in these groups, we're going to need to figure out some sort of attribute that applies to each group that we can use to isolate them from other groups with their own attributes, of course. And the way we're gonna do that is by using the normal of our base mesh. So let's add in a normal, hook this up to a separate XYZ. And a lot of what we're gonna be able to use to make these selections is going to be on the Z normal, since most of what we're selecting is based on just where it is in the vertical alignment of, of this group here. You know, the bottom floor is on the bottom. The walls are gonna be everything that's in the middle. You know, no matter how tall this thing gets, our walls are gonna be everything that is not the top floor or the bottom floor. So that's, that's how we're gonna select it is by using the Z because we can just say, don't select it on the Z here. And we're using the normal because you could use the position, but then you're having to, you know, link the position dynamically to the number of vertices and the height and all. It's, it's a mess. We're not, we're not going to do that because it's a mess. So how do we actually do this? We are going to use a, uh, well, we could just plug it in see what the, uh, normal does here. Let's plug it in here and connect this to our selection and see what happens. Hey, Future John here with just a little bit of a note. I'm going to be connecting all of these little setups here to the selection input of the instance on points node. I'm just doing that so that I can actually check to see what parts are being selected. 
and that's not where they're actually going to be connected in the end. I'm just doing it to look at things to actually visualize it a little bit better. In the end, it'll be connected to a different input, so don't get freaked out by the fact that I keep connecting and disconnecting all of this stuff. It's purely for me to be able to just visualize things a little bit better. Anyways, back to the video. Hooray, we have, we have a normal right here. Uh, we have our roof selected, actually, uh, which is a good thing. So our roof is selected, and if we change this around, we can kind of see what happens. We've done it here. Okay, so we decrease it a little bit. Now it's just a generic negative number. It doesn't really matter what the number is uh, right now. And that gives us all of our, all of our uh, walls right here. And if we decrease it even further so that it's below negative one, it then adds in our um, bottom floor right there as well. So we can use that. We kind of have a rough approximation of the normals that will give us various different selections. And so we can start working on figuring out what those things do. So what we'll actually do is switch this to equal and set that to a one and increase our epsilon a wee bit. Now epsilon is basically just kind of the uh, range that out, outside of this value right here that gives you a selection. So like, you know, if your, if your B is, you know, just to use this little line that I drew right here, if your B is right here, epsilon says how much within this range you can select as well. You know, you could set it to zero and then only the uh, values right here on the original mesh, mesh. I think that's, I didn't mention that really, but it's important to note is that this normal that we're talking about here is referring to the normal of the points on the uh, original mesh, not the normal of this cube that we're instancing. Didn't mention that, but it is important to note. Anyways, that was a sidetrack. Epsilon, yes, it is the uh, normal of that and how much outside of that range. If you set it to zero, it's only that exact value that you select. Setting a higher epsilon means that you can accept some values which are a little bit outside of that range. Anyways, for our roof, we will actually set our epsilon to zero because right here, what we're actually wanting to do is just select uh, the non-roof edge pieces. If we you know, disconnect this, we have this whole top floor here and we have the ones along the edge. Let's actually just increase the size a little bit so it uh, better illustrates my point. So we have the ones along the edge here, and then we have the ones in the center. And we want to actually distinguish between the two because the ones on the edge, we're going to add a little bit of an extrusion to them to get our little overhang. And the ones in the center obviously aren't going to be extruded anywhere uh, sideways because that would just make them collide with these. So we want uh, just to separate those so that we can only extrude the outside edge ones. So let's go ahead and rename this one to roof just so that we can uh, keep track of things a little bit. Then we will control shift D to duplicate and maintain connections. Let's go ahead and connect this one up here as well. So as you can see, we still have that selected. Now what we want to do is just select our roof edge pieces. So let's go ahead and decrease this a little bit until we kind of increase that a little bit. Um, as you can see, as I'm moving around, then you, we can select different parts of our mesh as well. So if I move it to about 0 0.66 with an epsilon of 0.1, then you can see I'm only selecting this roof edge right here. So I'll rename this one to roof edge. Then we'll control shift D to select another one. And now we will select our walls. That is everything below this top floor, but above the bottom floor. So that we can actually just set our Z to zero with an epsilon of well, zero, that'll work. And the reason for this is because anything, you know, on the top or the bottom floor, the vertices, oops, not the one. The vertices on this top or bottom floor, they're always going to have a little bit of a Z component. You know, they'll be facing out like that or 
down like that. So that's why just putting a zero works for these because they just go flat out like that. All right, so we have our selection for all of our vertical levels. So now how do we actually combine them and use them to actually instance different uh, modules? You know, these little cubes over here or whatever we end up using for those. How do we actually select those? Well, that is where the instance index right here actually comes into play. When you're using an instance index, you can actually switch between different instances that are connected here. If we have multiple geometries here, we can click pick instance and then use an index that we control with these here to select which ones go where. So first we need to actually create, you know, different meshes that we can use for this instance index. So let's go ahead and just duplicate our cube and maybe change the size of it a little bit so that we can see when we're actually switching between the two. Maybe we'll make it a little bit more noticeable of a difference. There we go. Okay, and then so somehow we have to join these together and we'll just use a join geometry for that. And I'm holding uh, Alt and then right click dragging to do the quick select for all these sorts of things. And it's very important here that you actually get the connection order correct because we're since we're using an index, it is dependent on which one of these is on top and then you know so on and so forth down the line. You actually wanna make sure they're correct. If you mess up that connection order, it can really mess you up and you'll have no idea why. So let's go ahead and connect these to our instance right there. And right now it doesn't look like anything has actually happened, but eh, even in wireframe, it's kind of hard to tell. The smaller cube is uh, also being instanced in here as well. It's inside of the other one. It's hard to tell because it is smaller and inside the other one. Let's just make it bigger along the Z axis. There we go. Now you can see I've made this one a little bit bigger along the Z axis so you can see both of them in here. But the way we actually select which one, we click pick instance and they all disappear. The reason for that is because, as you can see here, realized geometry is not used when pick instance is, in, is true. What does that mean? Well, right here, this cube and this cube are both actual geometry. If we uh, you know, take a look at them, they have ver ver vertices, not vertexes, vertices that show up inside here. But what the instance on points is looking for is for instances where you, you can see like, you know, if something is an instance, it shows up here, it doesn't show up as actual vertices and everything. And it's looking for instances rather than vertices. And fortunately, there is a very convenient node called mesh to instance, something like that instance geometry to instance yes we're looking for geometry to instance so if we plug this in here all of a sudden these come back and then we can duplicate and plug that in there and now they are all here and right now they are um it's alternating between the two i'm not really exactly sure why but if we plug in an integer we can actually control which ones are being instance. So right now it's set to zero. And this first one right here is instance zero because it's the one on top. And then we go to one and it switches over to this one, instance one. And then, you know, if we keep on going up, it just toggles back and forth because it's just re uh, recirculating. It's cycling back to zero. So we can actually just duplicate a couple times and get some different ones as well. So let's just change this one with shift S and turn this one into, oh, I don't know, a cone and turn this one into a, uh, an icosphere. Go ahead and pull like that in here. Make sure it's on the bottom one. So this is now, if we do this, it would be, this is instance zero, one, two, and three are our instance numbers right now. Go ahead and connect this one up here. Make sure this one's three. Now, as I uh, cycle through these things, we set it to zero, so we get this cube, then the other cube, then it switches to cones, 
and Icospheres. Now that we have all these selected and we are able to do this, uh, how do we actually take what we have selected here, our selection, and actually use that to do all that? We're going to do that with some switches. And what a switch does is it takes a Boolean input, which is what we have here from all these compare nodes, and it toggles between a true and a false value. And you can set what this actually does. Right now it's set to geometry. So in theory, you could just plug in two different geometries and switch between them. But what we're going to do here is use an integer. We're going to use an integer right here. And this allows us to set different uh, index values, you know, what we're doing over here, by using our Booleans. So let's take our roof here and plug it into our instance index and delete that right there. All right, so we have it all here. And right now our roof is outputting a true for these, these ones right here in the middle and a false for literally everything else. So what we can do is actually switch it from say false, that is everything that's not this center roof here, is a zero, which gives us our, you know, our bigger cube and everything that is true, that is the inside roof stuff, is a one. And as you can see, being as it's been on screen for the last five minutes while I've been talking, uh, it's, it's, it's switched over. And if we want to combine multiple of these, we can just combine switches and use multiple switches like this and output each one to the false of the next one. And what this will do is look backwards to each of these. So it'll say, let's go ahead and actually just hook this up right there and hook this one up right there. And then I'll kind of just show you what I'm talking about. So what this does is it kind of takes our uh, selection here and recursively goes back and looks to what satisfies kind of the minimum conditions. So for this first one, it outputs a true if it's a roof and therefore a one. So it selects that one. If it's a false, it says, okay, well, let's look back to the previous condition that we have here. Is, is the thing like any given point, if it's not a roof piece, let's look backwards. Is it a roof edge? If it is a roof edge, then it will output a two. And if it's, did I not select a roof edge? I did. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, anyways, I think you get the point. I hope you get the point. If it's not whatever this thing is, look backwards. If it's not whatever this thing is, look backwards again, and so on and so forth. And you can do this an unlimited number of times to select as many things as you want. And now please hold while I figure out why I have these cones all over my walls. All right, silly me, I just forgot to switch the true value right there. So now that we have some sort of selection process for our roof, roof edge, walls, and floor uh, levels, we can start actually selecting our corners as well because the corners are gonna kind of be a little bit of a tricky situation to, to deal with. So first thing we need to do is go ahead and just duplicate all these because we're gonna need you know additional meshes to kind of just distinguish where we have our corners uh, from what we actually originally have. So we'll just shift D, bring all that down, you know, right there and begin the long arduous process of connecting all these together, which I will probably fast forward through. But if I don't fast forward through, then I'll just continue talking. Maybe I'll continue talking either way. Make sure they're all connected in the right order. Looks like they are. All right, and we'll go ahead and switch these around a little bit as well, make them different sizes, change the shape of them a wee bit, and just change basically everything about them. Make this one a cylinder, because why not? Smaller radius. Smaller depth, change this one to a UV sphere instead of an echo sphere. Now I have all the additional meshes for me to use on the corner bits right there. 
Let's move that out of the way. And we're going to use yet again, Booleans. This time we're going to be using the X and Y because the only distinguishing feature between a corner piece and just a regular wall side or whatever is going to be what it's doing in the X and Y direction. Cause it's, if you look at the normal for like one of these pieces, they point out like that or out like that, but in the corner, it's going to be pointing more diagonal and you know, it's going to be, that look, that's horrible drawing. It's going to be like that and that, but then on the corner, it's going to be some combination of those two. So let's do that. Add in some more compare note nodes, not notes, nodes. And this time we will use our X and Y, but we want to use the absolute because that will make it so we, it's a math node actually. Uh, it's a math node. We'll set it to absolute. The reason we want to do this is because the, you know, the direction that the normals are facing, like, let's see, here's our X right here is going to be going left to right like this in on this side, the X is going to be facing in the positive X direction. And over here it's in the negative X direction. So we just want to take the absolute just because we want to normalize it and not have to worry about, you know, if it's positive or minus. And if we, if we didn't do this, we just have to use, you know, additional compare nodes. And I don't want to do that. It's easier just to use an absolute. So don't have to worry about that. Just only take the magnitude of the vector into account. Anyways, we're going to switch this one to equal because we just want to look at what it is. I don't know how to explain it any better. Let's just take this, connect it up here to our selection, and I'll just show you what it is. So as we take our, let's increase this a little bit so that way we can actually see what we're doing. As we increase the X vector, you can see that it's actually kind of, because we're doing the absolute, it's looking at both sides equally. It's mirroring them like that. Uh, that's because again, negative X, positive X. Um, if we do here, you can actually see, we just select the corner corner pieces rather than, you know, edge corners. There might be a utility for that. Um, if you want to use this value or whatever, I don't know, but I'm just going to do it like that. So we can select the vertical edge corners like that, but it's also selecting the horizontal edge corners, edges, not edge corners as well. And that's where we have to use the Y uh, vector as well, because otherwise we just end up with round selections like that. And we don't want that. We just want the vertical direction. Let's move these duplicate. I always forget to use a control shift D. It's so much more useful. Never forget control shift D. And if we do this one, but we, I guess we didn't want to control shift D, whatever. Uh, we'll connect it with the Y vector. Wow. And see what that looks like. And it does the same thing, but in the Y direction. But if you'll notice, if we go back and forth between the two, the only common ones are these vertical ones here, the horizontal ones, you know, if we're on X, it's going to be here for on Y, it's going to be there. So we can actually use that to our advantage by using a Boolean math. And what this does is it combines the two, uh, the results of two different Booleans and then does some sort of, you know, if this, then that to output a different Boolean based on the two of them. And the one where we need is, and it's, that's the correct one. What and does is it outputs a true result here. If the, if the result, if the, I don't know how to describe this. If the Boolean right here for any given point is true for both this input right here and that input right there, basically it remains true if it's an intersection between two Booleans kind of if you want to think about it in terms of the mesh booleans. Anyways, we do that and hurrah, we have edges, corners right there like that. So now we can add these to our little switch setup over here and do a very similar thing to what we did before. So we'll take this, import it there, take this switch, bring it into the false. And for our true, what we want to do is actually do a little bit of math. So what we actually want to do a little clever bit here is just add 
before. So rather than needing to kind of duplicate all these switches and create a new integer value for all the new meshes that we'll have for all the corners, we'll just do one thing and offset it by four. And the reason it's four is because there are four original meshes. We have the, the roof center, the roof edge, the walls, and the ground. That's four meshes. So we just want to offset it by four. So that, you know, that outputs our um, integer values as, you know, let's switch that to draw, and it outputs it as zero, one, two, that's a two, three. And so what we want to do is then just take all of that and shift it down here by adding four to whatever value. So we have four, five, so on and so on down the line like that. And this allows us to just kind of do the same thing, but without having uh, so many nodes right here. It's a little bit cleaner. So let's go ahead and do that. And push this over to our instance index. And you can see all of these change because these are ones that we've selected. It's the one that's true for all those. But if we deselect that, now you can see that every part of our mesh is a different mesh, if you will. So for zero, which is the floor, because it's the last one, it's the one that's these right here, the ones that are false for all of the conditions that we've set up. It's not a, it's not a roof, edge, wall, corner, anything like that. It's just nothing else. Uh, that's a zero. That'll be these cubes that we set right here. Then our slightly larger cube is going to be the one that satisfies the one condition. That's our roof. Right there, it's kind of a mess. You know, you could you could clean this up a little bit and make it have a little bit more logical sense. It's not really going to matter in the end. Uh, so on and so forth. You know, you get the point. Uh, our UV sphere is these uh, corners right here. All right. All right. So that's how we make all of our selections for all of the different parts of this. You know, our base mesh and deciding what meshes go into what parts of that, what it gets instanced on there. That'll be the end of this video. I don't know how long this will be. It could be 20 minutes. It could be 40. I have no idea how long these things are. Um, I'll clean this up after I finish this. All right. Um, so yeah, next, next part, I'm going to be rotating, rotating the modules because right now they're all facing the same direction. They're all facing, I don't know what direction it's facing. It's like facing out that way. My arrows are really bad when I'm not in overhead view. I don't know. They're all facing like out that way, but we'll want, you know, the ones over here to face this way and so on and so forth like that. So next part, we'll be figuring out the rotations and stuff. And after that, we'll actually work on creating the meshes. Anyways, I'll clean this up right now so that when we get started with the next part, it'll be nice and tidy and we'll have something better to work with. Have a great day, everyone. Or night, whatever. Anyways, bye-bye. Exciting news, I have launched a Patreon. That's right, at patreon.com slash ltfilm. You'll see this when you land and you can purchase yourself a little bit of benefits from my Patreon, a few different levels here, two, seven, 15, 25, or if you're feeling extremely generous, $500 a month, and you can get a few extra little things here and there. And I know if you're watching this video, you're probably really more into the blender stuff that I do. For just $7 a month, you can actually get blender projects like the one we're gonna be making here for this procedural building. You can get that for, well, not for free, but you can get it without having to actually do the work. Uh, so yeah, a um, few posts here. I'm currently working on updating everything for that. Um, all the scripts and stuff as well, if you're more into those sorts of things, uh, actually see all the notes I made. Uh, for one thing, the I haven't put it on there yet, but the uh, shortcuts video that I made a, a few weeks ago, that I've put that entire guide up on Patreon, or I will do it after I make this thing. By the time you get this message, I will have already done that anyways. I have made a Patreon. I am super excited for that, and I hope that uh, you can help support me as I, as I do this thing. Maybe you, I can provide a little bit of extra stuff for you as well. Um, anyways, yep, that's the end of my little message here. Back to 
the end of the video, I guess. Yeah. All right, before I forget, let's go ahead and actually save this before we finish the video. We will just call this building tutorial dot blend and save the blender file. There we go. It is now a building tutorial. See you on the next video. All right, so if you're watching me, I'm just gonna be kind of tidying this up for a little bit. Oh boy, this is gonna be a mess. You may not wanna watch this, you may, I don't know if you'll still be here or not, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a process because I'm gonna be like, you know, kind of ranting to myself while I'm doing this. It's gonna be really, really fast and loose here, what I'm doing. Not fast, absolutely not fast. It will not be fast at all, but it will be maybe entertaining. I don't know. You'll get to listen to my commentary to myself quite a bit. Personally, I don't know why I'm actually even continuing to record vocal stuff here, but I am because you know, I assume you all like to, no, I did not turn on Siri. Stop, go away. No, I don't know. You, you obviously you don't know this because I haven't mentioned it before. Um, I have my iPad on while I'm doing these things and I have the, I take a picture of my node setup while I'm doing it and I use that while I'm doing these tutorials so that I have something to kind of look at and reference while I'm working on it. Gives me something to look at a little bit and make sure that I am actually getting everything correct because otherwise it would all be a mess. Just like, like this little thing that I'm doing right now. I have no idea what I'm doing. I just try and make it look good. So I'm thinking about starting a Patreon. By the time you see this video, I may have already created it. And if so, I will put a little message at the end of the video before I do this part of the video, uh, asking people to sign up for my Patreon. And if I do, then I will, <sighs> what am I going to say? Oh yes. If I, if I create a Patreon, I will put a little message at the end of this video asking people to sign up for my Patreon. And if you do sign up for the Patreon, then you will get this entire not this one, you'll get the original project, the one that this is based on, the one that the little um, little picture that I showed at the beginning, you'll get that project file. It's a very neat little setup I've got there. I'm very proud of it. It looks really clean. But anyways, you'll get that. You'll be able to have the clean version of this set up without all the, without all the work. And you won't have to listen to me talk like this for hours and hours on end. This is, it's very tedious process, especially when I'm also trying to multitask and do all this talking while I'm, while I'm doing this. I am apologizing right now for that little sniffle right there. It was inappropriate of me and I apologize. I wonder if literally anyone is going to watch this part. I doubt it. I'm just recording for myself at this point, but if you do listen to it, um, I don't know, leave me a comment or something. I would very much appreciate it knowing that I'm not uh, just wasting my time here recording all this stuff.
time and data. But who knows? I'm going to assume that no one's listening. Maybe I should offer a prize if you comment. Like, John, I watched, I watched your little rant at the end of the video. Absolutely total waste of time, but I watched it. You get to see what all's going on in my head. It's not pleasant, obviously. It's just a lot of talking and ranting. I don't know if you can tell. I don't do this. I'm obviously not a streamer or whatever. I just create these little YouTube videos. Uh, let's make this look a little neater as well. So a lot of, you know, here's a little bit of, here's a little tidbit of information. If you're still watching at this point, I figure you might as well get some value out of this. When tidying things up, I find it really helpful to use the scale a lot. Um, like highlighting different elements, like, you know, this column right here and scale along the X axis and then zero it out. Obviously I've already done it. Uh, but that just helps keep everything in neat little rows and lines like that. Uh, da -da -bum. trying to decide in the end, all of the, the modules that I have here are going to be in a little node group. So that it's not just this giant sprawling thing like that. I'm trying to decide if I want to do that now. I, I think I'll leave it as is. Is that always something very important to the workflow later? Because I know nobody's watching this right now. Uh, but I'm doing it for me. I'm doing it for me because I love my work. And right now this is, this is my work. Did I already mention that if, if you're listening, I, I feel like I should probably give you some sort of reward because I do, I don't know what it is. If you're listening and you comment down below that you want a prize of some sort, well, let me know what the prize is because I don't know. I don't know what I can provide you, but I feel like if, if you're kind enough to have listened thus far, then you deserve something. So, you know, let me know. Did I already do that? I did. Uh, yeah. Let me know what, what you want and maybe I can, maybe I can do something. This is a mess. You know, this is probably good enough, but I am a huge fan of right angles. That means creating a bunch of these little points here, like so, and bringing this up to make a right angle vaguely. This is a very precise work that it's probably going to get messed up uh, on the next video. I'm going to mess everything up and it's going to look really terrible again, but I don't know. They have to have it be like this. Oh, oops. I forgot to save. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put this at before all this stuff and I'm just going to save it. But you, listener right now, get to hear me realize that I've forgotten to save it. Anyways, thank you, faithful listener, if you're still here. I promise, I promise, I promise, I am almost done. But I figure better do this now than, you know, whenever I actually get around to it. it. It makes it easier to work with, I think, to do this. Straight lines and right angles. I 
like I said, it's it doesn't look right. There, there's no need to be this precise, but I just I do it. Connect that there, and go ahead and make that like that. And bring this one down. See, doesn't that look a lot cleaner? I'm not going to bother with doing the right angles for all this stuff because it's all going to change and I know it's going to change and it's going to be a lot difficult, uh, more difficult to work with that. Anyways, there you go. You got to listen to me rant for a few minutes and see a little bit of tidying up. I might fast forward a little bit through this thing. Who knows? It's probably like 20 minutes in itself. Anyways, um, thanks for watching. Uh, you'll, you'll find out before this point if I made a Patreon or not. Bye-bye.